the launch price of the biggest, baddest thing that they had at the time, the 1080, was 740 bucks. <laughs> it came out at 599. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin. That's Jordan. That's Pedro. I keep meaning to make like little name tags for us. Where would it go about right there? Right Watch here a- on, on the floor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> try, try to line up. Yeah. Up top. <laughs> line up your imaginary. Um, that is a pain in the ass to do, man. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't, my- don't you have like the AI DaVinci Resolve stuff? You can just like stick it. And so it follows our heads around. Like I could. I could. Legend of Zelda. You know, the only face DaVinci Resolve really likes is Pedro's. Oh, there was no either. big pop filter in front of my uh, everything. There's like a, a Pedro's nice and pointy, and ah. it, it'll put the mesh because it'll do like a 3D generated mesh of the face and contract. Then I have like the beautify <laughs> option where I can put like makeup effects. Can, can can we can we get like the Giga Chad Pedro, please? <laughs> I look forward to uh, having that by the end of the show, Shout Realm. I could use a decent chin, to, to be fair. <laughs> at home, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Gentleman, mental gym. I've been playing around, man. I finally get around to uh, like I just out of curiosity, I uh, uh, Aldi has got me a copy of uh, the Jedi Souls game a while back. Then mm-hmm. you know, I I'd seen Pedro; he'd live streamed a little bit of it, and uh, I you know installed it, and I ran into the bug where if you went to the options menu, the game just kind of locks up. Mm. So I never or, went back. And or the performance tanks if you go into the character customization. Yeah. 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 I mean, it turns <laughs> you into. You can't that. be Pink Jedi. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, got back to it, played around with it. I'm like, you know what? I, I can get this. I, I can get this. So I, I've been putting a little bit of time into it. I think I might get all the way through it. But the big thing is this week, the on Wednesday, the 770 launched at Newegg. We're talking about the Intel Arc. Which was kind of a difficult thing to find because you would think like Intel Arc, where to buy a shop now? Nothing online. I had to go to Twitter, do a search, and I found another person like, "Hey, I finally found it. It's listed on uh, Newegg." And by the time I got there, which is maybe like I don't know when it launched, but it was like nine, ten o'clock in the morning, completely sold out, gone. Yeah, didn't exist. Man, I, I was I was looking for one on the Canada side, and yeah, same, second verse, same as the first, right? Like, dude. No look for it Ghost on Town. UK. It's like uh, there's no listings for it anywhere, and they decided to not just list on Amazon at all. So, yeah, not on Amazon. Didn't see anything <laughs> on eBay, but you know, eBay has gotten better about people because you got to actually have the item in order to le- yeah. to legitimately list something on eBay. You can't have like order confirmed and all that. They'll nope those. Uh, here's 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 going to be my test because we got a little bit of a theory. You know, this uh, red yarn on the back wall. I'm like, hmm. Pepe Sylvia. What if that was it? What if what if Intel just put out a couple and gave in, you know, New York a couple that gave, you know, other retailers like, you know, five or six and they're like, that's all you get. That's all we're making. Deal with it. And the reason yeah. I bring that up, all of this week I've been trying to keep track of Reddit and Twitter and stuff like that. Because normally when there's any type of launch, especially when it's limited and things immediately sell out, you start seeing people doing posts. You know, like, hey, I bought this and I got this. And I, there's plenty of people who receded the cards. I know these people. They've contacted me. One person's like, hey, do you want to borrow mine? I'm like, no, don't worry about it. That's too much work. But I haven't seen people like, hey, I finally got my card in that I ordered on Wednesday. And here we are on Saturday. I don't know. I want one until $350. Come on. Do you think, here's what I'm asking. Do you think they will get a restock? Yes or no? Yeah, I, th- I, I, th- I think so. Yeah, Intel yeah. cards. No, I want to put the bow on this. We're not talking about the AIB cards. The the the, the Intel oh, okay. branded cards. The yeah, ones yeah, if, from if Intel. it's just the Intel ones, uh, if they do it like AMD does, they release a very small number of those, and the rest is all AIB. Well, to put it very clearly, do you, Pedro? The only sixteen gig model, the only one remotely worth playing around with, is the limited edition seven seventy. <laughs> That's I'm sure limited, with enough people shouting limited. at them that the AIBs will get the 16 gig. <laughs> oh man, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Another thing I've been playing around with is Curdle 6.0. I uh, got that up and running, so I decided to burn an entire afternoon. Uh, 
having to redo the like graphs and benchmarks because I do real time latency testing because no one else bothers to do it. And uh, for audio interfaces, and I've gone back and these are all the USB interfaces that I could find <laughs> laying around the house. Two of them had to redo, the, redo this chart twice because I was like, oh, right, we did that and that. And then, of course, the Army AIO Pro, which is not USB, it's a uh, PCI Express, is at the top just for comparison. And um, yeah, what's, what's what's the uh, what's the gains? Is there any is there any like significant difference between like uh, they're looking pretty good? Yeah, we're getting about two and a half, three milliseconds because there was a uh, update with like I think Kurtle uh, five sixteen had some buffer reduction with USB, but it's still it's still an RNG shit show with USB mm -hmm. and Linux. Uh, but it's just USB is a horrible protocol for audio. You still get some of the Oh, look, it's 8.03 milliseconds. Let me unplug that and plug it back and do it again. Oh, look, it's 849. What changed? <laughs> Nothing. Um, well, you need to rotate the USB like 100 or 360 degrees, right? So that you get the new superposition. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, they're all within like a millisecond of each other. But yeah, there's that chart. Oh, I'm going to keep like a running chart. Lower is better in that particular case. So yeah, that's all I've been up to, man. Uh, how about you, Jordan Swan? Oh. Almost, almost done starving. I did my penultimate way, and tomorrow morning is going to be the final one. But uh, I've in the past sixteen weeks, I've dropped forty one pounds, and I feel like shit. I I, I, I want to eat a block of cheese. I want to. I just I, 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 I've missed dietary. Don't need a facts. block of cheese. This is what I asked Jordan while we were playing on. Yeah, yeah. Come, come hang out and come watch it. Uh, Back for bread. We're doing that on Thursdays. Uh, Muddling through the DLC chapter five. Yeah, worms and. Wait, is it Children of the Worm, right? Ch Children of the Worm. We yes. got like cultists and zombies and zombie cultists now. And it's it, it's they, got they a fun. Okay, it is very fun for the wrong reasons because when it's just me and Jordan, we get two bots, right? Yeah. And, so and the game's they, like, it puts it on nerf mode. So we, we can kind of smash our head way through it. Then uh, I think uh, BSN Joe, Joe, Joe showed up. Joe and showed then up. Rohit. Then Rohit. So then the game's like, oh, you guys are real people playing. Here, let's cut oh, the difficulty oh, oh, all the way up to yeah. one, and we just start getting squad wiped. <laughs> oh yeah, we got to get good. But yeah, just a big block of cheese, huh? Uh, big block of cheese to start off with. I miss peanut butter too. Maybe like eat a bunch of spoonfuls of peanut butter. Mm. Peanut butter uh, and cheese. You, no, yeah. you slice up the cheese and you spread peanut butter on the slices of cheese. No, that, that's too much <laughs> effort. I'm just gonna dip the block of peanut butter in the cheese and then like double dip it until all of it's gone. Okay, a block of peanut butter on the cheese. Right? Hey, man, look, listen, man, it's Canada. The cheese comes in bags. <laughs> let, 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 okay. Listen, I mean, yeah, shredded cheese. Yeah, the the the, the pre-shredded one. Yes, absolutely. Wouldn't that take like all the satisfaction out of it though? If you had shredded cheese, don't you want like a big block of cheese to bite into? Like, leave. I mean, I I, I I I do. This, this, but like, I, I don't know. You you use, you use the shredded use cheese, cheese for pizza. <laughs> no, I, I use the shredded cheese for just like snacking on and eating out of the bag. Actually, that's that's not even me. That's my that's my girlfriend who <laughs> get, get, gets in, in the depths of ketosis and very depressed. And then I come down and she's like eating cheese out of the bag. It's 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 the thing. OK, Pedro, how's your cheese game these days? I'm uh, actually not bad. I made pizza earlier today um, and uh, some I bought a bag at the ones they have in Tesco. Oh, did, did you put did you, you, put didn't, get a, you didn't get a pineapple? pizza from Burger King? Uh, no. No. Uh. <laughs> They probably Banana have pizza. pizza at some point in time, but not anymore. Uh, the uh, no, uh, I the thing that I'm really proud of was the uh, garlic bread. It's like a sliced baguette with a uh, um, little bit of butter, uh, some rubbing of the uh, the garlic on the bread itself, a little bit toasted, and then cheese on top of it. Put it in the oven with the pizza. It's so good. Yes, you gotta, you gotta put more garlic on top of it though. Like you gotta have like the cheese sandwich with like the garlic. On the outside, uh, yeah, no, a little too garlicky. And then Dory doesn't like it. She likes like the light I, taste of I, garlic. I, 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 Dory's I don't just understand. Out sitting on the couch for the block of cheese. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, I don't understand. Too too garlicky. That's that's the thing that exists. Yes. yes, yes, it is. And I also work with someone, coworker Dave. And I, uh, <laughs> he doesn't watch the show, but he doesn't like uh, garlic at all. With that, I don't understand. It's like, yeah. 
how? <laughs> Pedro, it sounds like your life's in danger. You're surrounded by vampires. Yeah, you should. Yeah, a no. bunch of blood suckers at the NHS. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, got they, they, they go around asking for anyway. yearly blood donations. It's like, yeah, so who's this going to? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a, hey, man, advanced strats, advanced strats. Uh, like our horse is full of advanced strats and no blood, though. No blood, though. It is drained out into the ground, seeped into the veins of the earth, causing new little horses to sprout from the ground. <laughs> it's a horse spring. It's the steam. Oh, the do you think we hey. could have um, horsey survivors? <laughs> horsey survivors, yeah. Man, so, yeah, we, we were talking about this in the uh, in the pre-pre Super Shows, and I got logged out of my Steam Mobile account because the- Do you think uh, would be pissed off if I sent him a text message? And like, I planted four horses and none of them grew. I don't think PETA <laughs> can afford SMS services, so- oh, okay. no. Uh, but yeah, we, we were talking about this in the pre-pre Super Shows, and uh, I got logged out of my Steam account on my mobile account uh, because there's a brand new mobile uh, mobile app that they pushed out that has some handy dandy new features uh, like the QR code login, which I tested and it works. Um, you can on the Steam sign in screen, it shows a QR code that you can scan through the app. It's not instantaneous like Discord, though. It threw me yeah. off because you still have to click the <laughs> sign in button. And I'm like, did it did it work? And then I got in and I'm like, oh, thank God, because I, I don't have those recovery codes handy. Um that, the I new took app a screenshot kind of, and I keep them on the NAS. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I should probably regenerate those, but I'm an idiot, so don't listen to what I say. Um, yeah, the uh, the the app is a little non-responsive though; it's a little chuggy. The original app wasn't like super. I want to know what type of supercomputer bullshit they have on that phone to make it move that fast. Right? Yeah, it's the, <laughs> it's some that's some load times. Uh, Maybe on but, iPhone it works like that. It, it, I don't know. I will say the app looks pretty slick. I do like the the new design. And now that there's a QR code login, the curator connect offer workflow is a lot less painful. But you know, any any word on fixing that valve? No. <laughs> the, don't don't want don't want to tell me what's what's in my curator queue. You I gotta gotta log in now. At least I know you gotta send the cryptic email to say yeah, right. you have new curator offerings. See, <laughs> and, and then I have to wait for Pedro to tell me what it exactly. actually is. That's, uh, I wait for the Pedro notification because I'm like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll get a. Yep, there it is. That is in the like. All right, neat. I managed to. No, I completely forgot that I installed it. This has been in beta for um, I don't know, like a, a month, months two now. months, yeah, yeah. And I put it on this poor, poor um. Amazon Gen One tablet in the studio. It's like, what do I do, Vin? I'm like, you oh, you run Discord. I was like, that's it. I was like, you can barely do that. Let's not get over adventurous. But I installed it. Oh boy, um, it does move at the speed of spell. But I did manage to get it to log in using the QR code once. I'm good. I did my victory lap, and I'm like, let's hopefully never go through that again. I'll be very happy, very pleased. Yeah, no, I I wasn't brave enough to log out of Steam on the desktop or the Steam Deck for that matter. So <laughs> I went to grab the laptop. It's like there, sign out. Look, did the thing? Click the thing. Yeah, it works. I'm good. <laughs> Boomer shooters. We got a couple. Well, we got oh, one yes. new game this week. Uh, this one's free too, which is very very nice. Uh, a wall. Uh, I suppose that means uh, away without official um, lanyards. Uh, it's a first person mill spec shooter developed uh, using the build engine. How about that? How can you tell? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it looks yeah like if you Duke look at Nukem? some of the screenshots, that is like, oh, that looks a lot like Duke Nukem. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> but I played it. I. Um, the there there's like squad shenanigans you you have like three other squad uh, npc squad mates that come along with you and it's hilarious because they can be standing in front of the enemy they're being you know actively shot by said enemy but don't shoot back unless uh, they're in the same like room so there's some weird uh, teleportation build engine shenanigans going on there um, because yeah, no, the, or, or the AI is just broken, which is also a possibility. There's uh, that. Pro- yeah, yeah, probably more likely, <laughs> but, but yeah, hey, no, you they know, straight for, up for free. Just don't shoot. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can't really complain that much because yeah, you, you don't, you're not paying it is for free. it. This is, yes. it is free. Um, it's, I don't, I don't know. It's nice to see the build engine have a bit of a resurgence. I mean, it's open source. It's freely available. So like people can make games with it and you know, it differentiates your game from, you know, being one of the other generic Unity shooters that is flooding Steam at the moment. So, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, I no, mean, this no one's got a story though. behind it. 
Every time I see something based on the build engine, I always have a thing to myself. I'm like, what, what happened to that path? Because there was a summer where I just got screamed at because I used all the ink to print out all the documentation on the build engine to try to figure <laughs> out how to make my own levels and the swing doors and stuff like that. Apparently, sometime, I want to know what happened in that timeline because I just fucked right off at some point. I'm like, nope, we're done with this. We're never going to get back into level design or anything like that. Oh, here. I, I, I found a screenshot I, you, 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 uh, that you I took. You would have gone a, into of, debt from printer ink. <laughs> the story in that game and there's like a comic strip and there's one line of like one uh, dialogue balloons like consult your clock that's not how time works okay Genius. google <laughs> what time uh, is okay, it tell okay, me the time. OBS. tell me a bedtime <laughs> story no it, it's uh the they're, they're, they were talking about uh doing things by the book and being on time and whatnot it's like consult your clock that's not how time works what? Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. The, the, the story seems to be kind of like Heart of Darkness Apocalypse now because you're like going to find your commanding officer while he's away all, while on leave. That's, that's what mm -hmm. the name of the game is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The, the, the commanding officer is called Duke. A little bit on the nose, that one. <laughs> well, I, I mean, the, the, what, the, the main character is named Dwayne Allen, you know, the son of Dwayne Johnson and Tim Allen, you know, the <laughs> action hero. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a couple updates to talk about this week. One came out late last night, which kind of caught me off guard, which I know is going to make a couple of people happy. I'm talking about Return to Monkey Island. That is right. Uh, native Linux build is ready for beta testing. If you already own the game, go here for instructions. I tried to click on that. Now you, uh, Ron Gilbert makes this point on his Twitter account, please, where it's safety Googles. You need not only, I didn't even know this was a thing, because let's play the home game. I'm going to click on this. So, yeah, it's a, it's a dead link. Error. I ran in. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a dead link. Apparently, you need to own the game and uh, own the game. Oh, and, the, and then it takes Be you to like, the, 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 the appropriate page. Sure. Yeah. I, I guess that makes a little more sense. But hey, you know, um, we, we've had a couple of Ron Gilbert games on Linux. Uh, then you brought up Thimbleweed Park in the uh, pre-pre super shows. Yeah, they sent us some keys for that back in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, I, I know I know people aren't like super up on this new version of Monkey Island because the art style is a lot more. Okay, I read about that a yeah. couple of times. Like, what's what's thing up with that? Did not enough pixels for people. Yeah, I, I guess pe people consider the art a downgrade. I think it's like stylized. I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, I, I guess yeah, people, people really just don't like the cardboard cutout characters. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't See, know. they should have hired the original team that did the uh, reboot kids TV show. Yeah, Rain, Rainmaker Studios, those good Canadian boys who are probably not in business anymore. <laughs> Actually, I think they're doing special effects for like Stargate and shit. I, I don't, yeah. All right. I I'd be done with that. Um, I mean, good news. I'm point and click. Like, we, we went, we've ridden that wave of like the resurgence of point and click, you know, when Double Fine was like redoing everything. And, you know, then I'm like, all right, I'm good. Those games died out for a reason. But hey, if Monkey Island's your gem, Soon you'll be able to play it natively on Linux, and that's always good. Now, yeah, golfing. Yes, <laughs> mini golfing specifically. Jordan's favorite. Uh, <laughs> golfing in the ether uh, now apparently has uh, native Linux support. I didn't even know that there was a you know big request from the community to get uh, golf in the ether. But Pedro, here we it's are. called the yes, it's called the Steam Deck, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But then again, everyone or everyone else is using uh, Proton. But yeah, no, I'm not complaining, not at all. Uh, and um, speaking of Steam Decks, the developer says it's like, okay, uh, Steam Deck support. I don't have a Steam Deck, so it should work effectively. But then I look at that screenshot right there. It's like that's SteamOS three. What are you talking about? Did you use Hollow ISO? Well, well, what's going on here? But yes, yeah. it is. Um, it it it's available. If you own it, you can just try it. It's out. got. It's got cross-platform multiplayer too, and it's entirely done in Vulcan, which is two yep. things that we love to hear about in on this show. Not quite enough for me to forgive it for being a golf game, but you know, good good on you. You get good technical scores. Well, I think they do something a little bit interesting with this because it's procedurally generated. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> so that could lead to some interesting levels of nonsense. Is it, is it uh, multiplayer or is it uh, just single? Yeah, player? that's cross platform multiplayer. Oh, yeah. Wait, I just fucking. Yeah, yeah you just mentioned off. that, Jordan. <laughs> My, listen, man, I, I am so undercaloried. I, I I have one more day to milk that excuse before. Oh. <laughs> 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 
Do you think we're going to see one more of this? Because I think that was um, $14.99. So what's this thing cost? Uh, $7.99? Uh, it's very, very cheap. It's uh, £5.99. So yeah, probably like $8, 9 dollars right, <laughs> Good on them for playing around that. You know, what, what could have happened, Pedro, is like m- maybe like somebody who played the game regularly had a Steam Deck and they were like, here, could you try this? Because here's one Quite of the things bit, about a yeah, Steam Deck is it's not be. a moving, <laughs> yeah, it's not much of a moving target. You're know, like, hey, I know how to like check. If you get it working on one Steam Deck, it's going to work on the rest of them. No, yep. there's too much fragmentation on, on desktop Linux. It's impossible to get one game to run on <laughs> the same distribution on the same computer. It, 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 that argument really is the pinnacle of, I don't know anything about Linux. Because, yes, if you target SteamOS and you make sure that it works on the Steam Deck, every other distribution that one to stay relevant is going to make goddamn sure it works. That's uh, how it's going to go. They just got to make sure that the sound is working so they can hear you say that. <laughs> sound doesn't work on Yeah. You might I as well be screaming into money the void. On a duet. <laughs> no, man. Uh, well, uh, I mean, hey, hey, listen. That is how window Winbros communicate with each other on Twitter. They talk about not being able to get <laughs> sound working on their Linux. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, to be fair, uh, they were getting problems getting sound working on Windows for those people who tried to install Windows on the deck. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's just a piece of shit. Sound doesn't even work on it. It doesn't even you play gotta, You gotta give Valve, like, they're still doing updates for that. They were, like, for both of you. Yeah, they had to You want to install your hacker OS on your Linux console. Yeah, the audio driver for Windows, apparently, was causing crashes, so they had to update it. <laughs> Mm. Like, I, I, again, it's it's a minor miracle that like Valve is providing any support for that. But hey, speaking, speaking of, of deck deck verified, deck, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. We've been waiting for that because we don't have PlayStations. We'll have PlayStation. <laughs> Pedro has a PlayStation that he is deliberately not using for just hey, to spite I, us. I, I got Linux running on it. That, <laughs> that was the extent. Deliberately of my not using to spite <laughs> himself and others. Jordan, and, Jordan, I don't know if you know, man. Bloodborne on the play PS4 is just way overrated. It's too popular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, it's you might as well not play. But it that's at all. why I want to play it, not on the you PS4, because I don't want to pay for the fucking multiplayer. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I, I like how this is worked into like well if i had a ps4 i got a ps4 well if i had blood now i got blood but more like, hmm. yeah, no, no, where, where I, I, do we got to redo this line the um, issue was always the same one it's like the fucking del- i don't deliberately, get to experience most of the game deliberately not using of not wanting to play for, got for, it yeah, okay playstation move, plus move, <laughs> moving on moving on <laughs> Because we, we've had this conversation to death. Uh, but, you know, a bunch of PlayStation games are coming to PC. Uh, we saw Spider-Man. We saw God of War. Uh, we are now seeing that Uncharted Legacy of Thieves is n- making that uh, move over. And hopefully, Uncharted performance is a better love story than Spider-Man or that Uncharted movie. Man, that's like a lot of Tom Holland in one story. Also, uh, if you look at the tick boxes, it looks like it's running on Proton Stable, so you're not going to be running Proton Experimental once this comes out. So I think definitely um, Naughty Dog and Iron Galaxy is, I think they're the they're the people who are doing, working on the PC port, yep. paid for that Code Weaver's uh, QA so that, you know, shit will actually run on Wine. But I, I guess now we got to see what the price is, and we got to see uh, the release date is October nineteenth, according to this. So next week we'll have some more news about it. Apparently. Well, when I think about Deck Verified, I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure they have a Steam Deck, and they just loaded it up. And they're like, yeah, it runs. <laughs> well, to, in order to be verified, Valve has to do the uh, the whole yes, is it actually verified? That particular. Um, way of doing things that uh, Flippity Jibaibo fundamentally disagreed with. <laughs> the How much of that is automated, though? Bl- probably launching the game. very good question. All of it, probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> launching the game and spamming some yeah. inputs. I don't know. It's awesome. I want to see more PlayStation games, but uh, yeah, going back to the Bloodborne thing. Where Bloodborne? I want well, Bloodborne. <laughs> I mean, you say that, but what you meant to say is, where's Last of Us? That too, I too want to play that. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, do they do they have the multiplayer working on PC for uh, for Dark Souls three and Elden Ring again? Because that they had to shut that Dark down Souls three. Yes, Elden Ring was always up. Uh, but yeah, no, Dark Souls two and Dark Souls the first one remastered. Uh, 
So mm-hmm. so you you could just play Bloodborne on PlayStation 4 and pretend that you're playing Dark Souls 3 on PC. And what's 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 the difference? I got a real question for you, Pedro. Are but you I can play get... Dark Souls 3 on PC. I don't want to. <laughs> I want Bloodborne. Pedro, are you going to buy the Elden Ring DLC? Yeah. Oh, right. Elden Elden Rings of Power? More rings. <laughs> I already spent 200 and something hours in Elden Ring. Yeah, I want to play more of it. Okay. <laughs> I was... I, you're the only person I know that plays Elden Ring. So as I, I heard that there was some DLC. Yeah, you are. I don't. <laughs> it's by, uh, you know, outside of like Vampire Survivors, it's one of the most popular games of 2022. <laughs> yeah, but we can also throw in how, how many people in Shadowrun play Elden Ring. Pedro. And... I don't know. Let's see a show of hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How, how many people have put more than two hours in Elden Ring? Ooh, show of hands. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> because, like, oh, yeah, no, I installed it and I played it and I hated it. That's, yeah, I technically played it. But, like, how many of you have actually put time in there? No. Right. Just, you, just, just Pedro. Unless you've hit a wall 50 <laughs> times, it doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. That's one boss run. <laughs> it's, it's, oh. it's the creepy kitty cat that breathes fire at you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Well, coming up next. NVIDIA publishes a digital kickstand for their brand new video cards and then claws back another one of those video cards because it hasn't been released yet. I don't know. Hashtag and launch. It was just implied that the self-promotion, which is about to happen, would be in one way or another. God damn it, Jordan. I'm thinking about David Bowie's... And now let's, everyone let's, is thinking I, about uh, da- I am how always, well endowed David Bowie was. Yes. I am always <laughs> thinking about David Bowie's package, and so should you be. And if you want to have long, extended conversations about David Bowie's testicles with us, head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast and sign up. You can get access to our Discord channel where you can talk all about your favorite celebrity genitals. You, you can genitals. get the live and uncut version because I just want to go to Patreon. I'm like, oh, right. We were looking up cheese. <laughs> <Jeez. and> <laughs> yeah. You... Uh, <laughs> You, you can actually get access to those live and uncut videos early, but uh, you can also get access to show notes, get your name in the credits, uh, RSVP to game streams. Uh, Ven does Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays, and I do uh, and we do Back for Blood on Thursdays. I, I guess I got to figure out what we're going to do after we finish the campaign. We got another couple of weeks, though, given given the rate at which we saw. Given our current rate, uh, we do want to thank DNS Joe, DSN Joe, and uh, Rohit for hanging out with us and really quaking that difficulty level up because uh, George yeah. and I were playing with two bots and we're just kind of, you know, doop, uh, doop, doop. yeah, smashing our heads against problems getting through it. Then when we had four people, the game's like, oh, I'm going to cut the difficulty there, up to one. And that was like, great oh, too because no. because uh, Joe came in and he's like, yeah, I've just been pretending I was a bot because like yeah. I, I don't have voice. And it's like, oh, it's because we're in the wrong Beep, disorder. boop, beep, boop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh no we had a good time we have a great time doing that and yeah come hang out with us on trek mania we have our own private server you get access to that 24 7 seven days a week 14 new tracks we get together we practice on that during the week on a friday we come out we hang out do a points match it's just a good time and we always do a little bit in the after shows and as well we we yep that's that's true uh so yeah sign up for our patreon you can also get access to discord uh by subbing to us on twitch here twitch.tv slash linux gamecast we have a store as well we don't have lgc gray tight pants for you to show off your bulge but maybe one day we will have those juicy sweatpants man i keep like meaning a suggestion to, right there. dude i'm <laughs> i i don't know if i'm going to put them in the store or not but i keep meaning to get a jordan face print uh sweatpants, yoga pants but, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna happen one day. I'm gonna just show right up with between that. the cheeks. Well, yeah, well, yeah, right, right in between. It's like it's like, it's like one of those mad fold-ins, like on the back cover. You can get like a different picture if you like take my face and fold it in on itself. It's gonna be horrifying. Um, we oh, we got we got to think. Uh, speaking of Twitch, we also got to thank uh, PT Dave uh, for resubbing to us on Twitch. Oh yeah, use yeah. code Frank at checkout for nine dollars off your order. And yeah. Nubbin as well. Also and Twitch Nubbin. race hub. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, buy some LGC merch. Buy some LGC stickers, coffee cups, uh, t-shirts. I think that's about it for now. We'll get those me face booty shorts, yoga pants eventually. What else do we got? We got wish zones. Uh, if you go to linuxgamecast.com, mouse over the support button. Uh, I have one. Ven has one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. It's my birthday coming up in a couple weeks. If you want to buy me something nice, I will absolutely whore myself out oh. for you guys. Um, God buy, damn it. Buy, now i got to find something that's going to like equally piss you off as much as... You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get me the AK-47 guitar so I actually have to learn how to play it. <laughs> no, because you'll put it next to your smoke machine. Shut up. And the green screen. Uh, <laughs> and the green screen. Shut up. 
Um, but yeah, you can, uh, but you can buy Ben some uh, green motherboards. Stop my non-beating heart, Pedro. The top thing <laughs> yeah. is actually usable awesome. and it doesn't blink. Yeah, it's an SSD. It's a two terabyte but, SSD for me to put the, all my games in. The <laughs> second thing blinks and is not usable. Hey, but you uh, can. That's a keyboard. It's perfectly usable. Come you can on. stop it from blinking with a heat gun. Uh, <laughs> Ryzen's, yeah, uh, studio. We got one, so you end up back here. Uh, again, you know it. I got you know it on because uh, we couldn't find those markers. Uh, I don't even think there's anything reasonable in this. Uh, nope, not really. I listen. I I really don't want. I genuinely don't want to get that. Um, DC Helium. <laughs> That's the new YouTuber special. Of course, you want that. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you you want you, you want you wanted to make a video. That's about it. Uh, I want to play around because they're doing they're reverse engineering it because they didn't release Linux drivers. Uh-huh. So I kind of want to stay abreast of that. And that's the one with like the bleep button and all that. It's going to go into cold storage, but it yeah, like as to what Pedro said, that's what all the damn they make a stupid expensive version of that one is like four hundred bucks. That's the one that Linus has. It's like the big one that has all the buttons and all the things. It's like, oh. Yeah. F that noise, baby. <laughs> F that noise. Um, Yeah. Thank you for your support. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come hang out with us. Keeping us loud, live, independent. Doing what we do the way we want to do it. Not beholden to anybody. We didn't get any checks this week. Huh? Did NVIDIA send no. us money? No, man. <laughs> they, they need no. to if we're going to afford one of these new video cards. I guess, we, I guess we can get into it. They can release some new drivers for those aforementioned cards that require kickstands. Uh, yeah, it's coming out. Uh, this is the 520. Woo! Blaze it! Uh, .56.06. Uh, we got some cool new stuff in here. We got uh, NGX support over the air for uh, Proton. You can uh, get access to that by setting the Proton Enable NGX Updater equals 1 to the game's boot arguments when you launch it. The game does need to actually support it and lets it pull in all the um, all these spe- uh, specialized uh, AI features for it. Um, what else we got? A uh, bunch of uh, a bunch of the ray tracing uh, and uh, uh, Vulkan exp- extensions and NVX Vulkan exp- extensions uh, no longer have a requirement on NVIDIA UVM.SO. Uh, Pedro is going to tell you why that's a good thing. Well, yeah. You know- it is a very good thing because we talked about the open source drivers uh, for Vulkan last week, and this basically removes the requirement from the proprietary drivers in order to be able to use those extensions. That's very good. That's that that that's a solid thank you, Nvidia. Appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, <laughs> say what you will, negative about Nvidia because all there's, of it's true. All of it's true. Hundred yeah. percent of it. Uh, as Linus would say, the real Linus, not the squeaky one. Now, uh, they have, for the last two decades, treated desktop Linux as a first-class citizen. Mm-hmm. Case in point, 4090's out. This driver has support port out of the box. It's there. They fix things in Proton for us. They do. And, and they, they actually do. introduced like, the proper DLSS2 support that now you can get the updated um, AI stuff just by setting the... Um, environment variable you can That's, and yeah. <laughs> you know we're, we're almost at parity with but here's the thing nvidia i'm still feeling a little bit left out your brothers and sisters in linux land we don't get the same experience because we don't have to enter our email address to download your drivers so i want i want you to take that last step for us so we can really feel like uh we're valued yeah they're, they're, <laughs> For sure. There is, there is one critical bug fix in this driver, though. The progress bar on the Curses installer is apparently apparently less of a filthy fucking liar now. Because before it's just like, nothing. Done. Done. And now yep. there's, there's, there's some you know steps what? in the middle. Maybe I noticed that. Maybe I noticed that. I will say I di- I'm running them right now on the system that we're streaming with. And uh, it does compile against kernel 6.0. Okay. Which is good. Wasn't there an option in there to tell it to like ignore kernel version something? Uh, I know. Th- I know. There's a there's a thing for ignoring the uh, C compiler mismatch. No, in, uh, okay. Add this kernel feature by. What does that even mean though? Um, Nvidia installer allow use of add this kernel feature by non users. Is that is that an option now? Where you can just tell it to I th- fuck up? I think what that does is it lets you just build it for a specific kernel oh, as opposed like to just the... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it just tells DKMS to build it for a different kernel without having yeah. to use sudo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of like NVIDIA stuff, uh, I posted this uh, on Twitter, which I was kind of shocked. What do you think about this, Pedro? Uh, out of curiosity, I went and got the... I have an antique motherboard. 
vintage motherboard. It's an X399. And when I say X399, I don't mean Intel. You're like, what? Yeah, I got one of those. I got the MSI Creator. Turns out at the end of last month, they released a updated BIOS. Like it, like Windows 11 support, whatever. I popped that in out of curiosity. Lo and fuck mothering the whole beta my I got an option to enable bar rebar support. Reset oh, bar. okay. So that was just hidden away behind the lack of software support. That's good. Uh, That's yeah, very good. <laughs> do this. I, I installed the NVIDIA driver, opened the NVIDIA control panel, and it says, yes, rebar support detected and enabled. Yeah. It, it, it is a uh, Threadripper motherboard. So, yeah. <laughs> Gen 1, like I said, vintage. Now, fortunately, I was able to get up. I did this on, I know now, Tuesday, because I got up on Wednesday to... Like, hey, I got rebar support. I guess I really can play around with this new arc. Let me go ahead and order. And guess not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Boo, womp, womp. That's not the only thing we can't get our hands on, ladies and gentlemen, because on launching the 12 gig 4080, you know, the 4080 that genuinely every tech tour came out and rightfully said, like, this isn't a 4080. The 12 gig, there's like the regular 4080, right? Yep, yeah, uh, 16 gig. 16 gig. The 12 gig was a cut cut down die, cut down memory. I think it was a slower memory. Of, but yeah, it was uh, 192 bit bus as opposed to 256. And yeah. It had like 2,000 less CUDA cores or something. So shit. check this out. The 4080 12 gig is a fantastic, graphic, fantastic graphics card, uh, but it's not named right. Which, no. you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You got to imagine somebody at NVIDIA, NVIDIA going, listen, we had to find out how dumb we are. We had to try. We, we had to see. And like, they found the line. This is it. We're pressing the unlaunch button on the 4080 12 gig. The RTX 40 is an amazing and on track, not whatever, but yeah. And then they follow it by like marketing, advertising <laughs> and mm-hmm. stuff like this. Like after saying, oops, our bad. Sorry. So no, no, I just want to comment on that line there. Having two GPUs with the 480 designation is confusing. Mm-hmm. Oh, NVIDIA. Let's talk about the shield. Or let's talk about the Titan X. Well, at least they're learning, Pedro. I, 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 okay. My first, my knee-jerk reaction was, oh, they're going to get some 4070 stickers, right? And they're going to call this thing a 4070. <laughs> yeah. Like everyone now is like, yeah, this is a 4070 NVIDIA. And he's like, nah, don't, nope, nope, nope. This is a 4080. Come on, like, and no one's and like, fine, 4070. Now, my second thought was, all of the AIB partners, add-in board partners, you know, your MSIs, uh, no longer your EVGAs, uh, ASUS, they might be sitting on stock. Maybe they don't have like final assembly of these things yet, but they've definitely put in the orders for the uh, dies and all that. More importantly, turns out a lot of them had already printed the boxes for these things. Like, yeah, you know, we're getting ready to ship these things in like two months from now. So we got to get all this in the, you know, tooled up, ready to go. Now, allegedly, NVIDIA is going to help AIB partners eat some of the cost of uh, destroying and remaking all the boxes for whatever they decide to call this. But if you're an AIB, okay, that, hey, not a huge problem. It's still going to mess you up. You still got to reflash all the firmware on all these cards. Yeah. Because that the, VBIOS ain't going to downgrade itself. <laughs> You know, you you can't have this thing saying, hey, I'm at 480, 12. It's got to say, you know, 479, 4079. You, you think they're going to cut out some features too, just because it's not the 4080 anymore? They're just right, turn right. Off. We got to find some way to nerf this thing so we can make it price parity with whatever. And I can just see EVGA just laughing right now, going, man, Neo yeah, Dutch I guess they saw one. the writing on the wall. <laughs> yeah. And like, when, when, when NVIDIA pull shit like this like yeah no you you absolutely can't blame me vga for being like mm. yeah we'll take the financial hit it's not it's not worth the stress anymore and it's gonna bounce up your like your budget all that stuff because you were expecting okay this the 40 80 12 gig and we're forecasting to make this in two months and whatnot so this is what we're gonna all of a sudden that cash flow just yeah and i'm sure nvidia being the carrying company that they heard is like what are you, what are you gonna do yeah we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll pay for your new boxes Maybe. We won't. We won't pay for literally anything else. So you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind the twelve gig card at like a seven hundred dollar price point if they like made that made that a little more reasonable. Could maybe do without the kickstand though. That would, that would be nice. But you know, I'll I'll I'll, t- I'll take it if I don't have to pay out the literal nose for it. I don't know, man. Um, 
at these prices, like the 4090, the 4080, these cards don't exist to me because like, I'm not going to participate in that. And I went and looked it up and did maths. Like adjusted for inflation, the launch price of the biggest, baddest thing that they had at the time, the 1080, was 740 bucks. <laughs> it came out at 599. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From six hundred bucks to seven forty, that's yeah, that's that sounds about right. <laughs> that's a bit of a jump, and yeah. you, you got to think like, yeah, if you, you not even the top of the line, but it, like the, you're still looking at what twelve hundred dollars, yeah, yeah. twelve hundred no, no. for the sixteen gig, <laughs> and yeah. I hundred percent cannot be alone. And like again, these cards don't exist; they're fanfic stuff. Like I, whatever. You know what I was thinking? I was like, I, well, I wonder if I can get a good price on a 2080 Ti now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Although uh, the, the there's the big AMD uh, reveal event coming out in um, Three weeks. November, 3rd of November. Jordan, Pedro, do you have a lot of faith in that? Where are you feeling on that? I... I think AMD is going to have the pricing options. Like, oh yeah, it uh, performs about on par with this other card that they released that costs about 300 bucks more. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, and I, that's I, I, why I... they unlaunched. That's the real reason. Because, again, they don't give a shit about naming. The Titan X stands to reason. The Shield series of devices stands to reason. The 8800s, as uh, Mir pointed out in chat, stand to reason so yeah no the, the it seems like there's another motive behind this. oh yeah I, I, absolutely they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna try and do a reverse debate on amd i yeah. i don't know though i because the 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 other thing is we, we've been we've been hyping this amd release up that lisa might just come out and be like yeah so people are just willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars for a video card now so that's what we're just going to be charging fuck you guys well i mean it could be 14.99 and this is one yeah. of the things that's like puzzles me about intel intel you can just lock in the fucking low end if you keep printing these damn cards mm -hmm. because people would rather they could let run me finish away the thought with the low end. <laughs> yeah they can own it because people will take a new card with a warranty from intel for 350 bucks but come back to what i said last week if they're breaking even on that card i'd be shocked they have the fabs that they probably are. They don't. They don't do the chips on the Intel Arc. Oh That's, yeah, right. They they they, they lease those out to uh, TSMC. TSMC. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Samsung. And I, I saw uh, Gabriel uh, Nexus tear down of the thing. It's, it's like that's some me level over engineering. <laughs> so 330 marks. That's why I just want to get one. I'm like, mm, that thing might be capable of doing some cool stuff in the future but that's the only card intel has that's worth a damn for a low-end card everything else is like might as well not exist unless you want to buy an 8 get card in 2022 amd i'm not expecting amd to come in and be like salvation but i i do you do you think amd is going to come out with something let's say 80 percent of the performance of the 2080 and the 500 hundred dollar range one can hope 80% probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the for rasterized games, not in uh, any ray tracing or you can leave DLSS <laughs> out of the equation entirely. For the yes. 99% of games out there that people <laughs> yeah. play. Yeah. That segment. Because we've already seen what NVIDIA can do with the raster rasterization performance and everything else when they build a card targeted at for miners mm -hmm. from the ground up including size, because, again, that makes all the sense when you put it in an open-air case, doesn't it? Like, yeah, I guess you want to worry about it. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about a more powerful gaming PC yeah. than we could ever build at home. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't get your hands on a 12-gig 4080. Maybe maybe you want to give up on just, like, the massive power draw and the, the, the cost of running a desktop computer. You just want something a little simpler, like... Maybe something Chrome OS based that allow you to just play your games anywhere. Well, lo and behold, Google has something for you. Stadia's corpse isn't even cold yet. Can and we, we got please some... quit dragging out Witcher <laughs> Three? That game's seven years old, man. No, you can play GTA Five too, and and Skyrim, <laughs> all all of your favorites still. Um, GTA yeah, Five uh, is nine years old. <laughs> yeah, uh, powerful PC game streaming is now available for you via GeForce Now, and not. 
Stadia because that never existed, you <laughs> silly bitch. Oops. Buy our 15-inch Chromebooks. Yeah, we got some brand new gaming Chromebooks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not obvious. Xbox, GeForce. L- Luna, and uh, there's well, a missing spot there. Oops. Also, Luna, you're like, oh, right, Amazon's got one of those, right? Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, uh, th- these are the ones that are, the box are going to come with the little sticker, the GeForce Now sticker, and the Luna sticker over where Stadia used to be. By the way, this just in, this is the new interface. It just rolls them through like that. You have no control over it. You just got to sit and wait. So okay, so what 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 is a what is a gaming Chromebook? Because that that is the uh, that that is the question. Why do you should ask, Jordan? Because I have to. I, <laughs> yeah. I would like to direct the court's attention to Exhibit A. RGB, but it's not it's not just that. Because you know, we've we've been hearing shit about like Project Borealis. We know that Steam is eventually gonna come to Chrome OS. So you hear the name Chromebook or gaming Chromebook and you think, oh, maybe it'll have like a badass NVIDIA or Intel oh, or, man. or I'm IRS just reading GPU. through this, man. We go right from RGB gaming keyboard to where it's implied that it has some in fact uh, effect on low FPS or high FPS. As you're yeah. scrolling through, you're like, what? well, you know, you know, you do get that 120 hertz monitor on, you know, your laptop. That's going to be great. So you for can your do YouTube frame videos. interpolation for everything because uh-huh. it's not going to be rendering 120 yep. hertz. But ba- basically, <laughs> and, and look, look at, looking at the specs of the machine, they're all very, very modest. So what I'm hearing is gaming equals 15 inch form factor plus RGB blinky bullshit. Yeah, you get ray tracing on Invi- on Nvidia oh, you gotta servers. Be yeah. shitting. Oh, you gotta be shitting! They don't even they didn't even bother putting the slidey bar thing. I have one of those on our web zone for fuck's sake. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> this is just and, a and static like, picture. And like here here's here's the thing though. You could actually sell me on a gaming Chromebook if you gave me a laptop with like a badass GPU mm-hmm. that could actually run some shit in Proton, which they're clearly trying to work with because we've seen we've seen it, we've seen the code. Uh, like I, that, that could move some units, but now, now you you don't even get the the con, the convenience, right? Like it's it's all through GeForce now. It's all through Xbox Game Pass and Amazon Luna. Well, I mean, it's doing what a Chromebook set out to do, though. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, but that's not a good gaming experience. Well, I mean, that meeting went exactly. Hey, we're gonna make gaming Chromebooks. What do we got to do? And they rattled off stuff like screens and all that. And they're like, RGB how about we just put RGB yeah. keywords on it? And they're like, done. Let's print it now. <laughs> gaming <laughs> here's something i want everybody to check because i'm in the united states you are in uh canada and you're in britannia let's all take a look at maybe what we could pay for let's say the i'm assuming the acer is going to be the cheap one right probably sure. they usually are yes. yeah <laughs> so let, let's have a look what are we going to pay for an acer chromebook 516 ge you know what 649 i was expecting worse not available in canada Damn. Yeah, man. not available in the UK. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> How much is the Asus one? Now I'm curious. Six ninety nine. Uh, okay. Like again, it's it's a like the thing Ooh, you're gonna end the up idea pad's actually the cheapest one. No shit. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Lenovo. What was that? Yeah, twelve. It, it only has the i three. That's the one with the uh, i three. Yeah. No, you 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 get an i five with some like basic bitch Intel integrated graphics. Again, like yeah, the couldn't GPU couldn't, couldn't at same. least couldn't at least slap an arc on that or an iris or something. Come me, come on, guys. I mean, Google, give me that in a tablet form factor, and I'll give you four hundred bucks for it. <laughs> I will. I already feel bad about it. I mean, maybe a little bit on a Tuesday. Could you could you run Unigen oil rush on it? <laughs> Bitch, I'd try. Oh, oh, hang I mean, on. if it's just streaming, then yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Somebody needs to be like, yo, hey, uh, GeForce Now, can you... Okay, if you have a benchmark installed on your Steam, can you stream it through GeForce Now? Yes. Mm. Uh, if yeah. the benchmark people didn't uh, specifically disallow that, there were a couple that did, but you could run um, 3D Mark... I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, our national nightmare is over. Unigen 2. 2.16, 2.16, 2.16, Asset Store, Vulcan, DirectX 12, ROS integration, new Windows manager. Oh, man, they are so excited to tell you all about... Man, they got broken images all over the site now. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, it took them a while. They had their reasons uh, for taking so long getting the uh, Vulcan stuff. But here's what they say about DirectX 12 and Vulcan. Vulcan can bring you up to 100 to 200% CPU and 30% GPU boost as compared to OpenGL. DX12 doesn't offer that much, comma, but it's still a good plus. 
<laughs> Say what you really mean. Say what you really mean, Yanagen. Now, here's the thing. This is good, but you know, you might not know some people. Look at all these. Are you guys getting the broken images on the yes. site? Yes, yes, okay. I am. All I'm right. gonna do a refresh. No requested URL was not found on the server. Oh, <laughs> oh shizzle oh. snaps. <laughs> they, you know, the the image links just broke because they were loaded before, and then I switched to the tab. Huh. Oh. Well, hey, they like, pulled. We're, 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 we're going to be recording on too late, bitches. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm reading through this, and especially with the Vulcan stuff, they're like, you know, all the Zom God, uh, it's so great, it's so fast, it's wonderful. The Vulcan is this revelation like that. Yeah, in 2015. Yes. Yeah. Like, you should have said that five or six years ago. Then we're like, yeah, we agree. We're like, but now, you know, everything has Vulcan baked into it. You know, your uh, Unities and uh, Unreal Engines, go to, right? If you're yes. running a game on Linux, odds <laughs> are it's running through Vulkan. So, what do we think? Uh, do you think we'll ever get another game made with uh, this? Are we, are we just going to get a new version of Oil Rush or, you know, that spe- <laughs> skiing game? Or p- thank you, Pedro, for reminding me about Cradle in the show notes. Oh, right. I, yeah. I, would, not, I would not have get, remembered that for the life of me at all. Yeah, I mean, no. Uh, their the, texture the painting looks pretty neat. Yeah, the thing that I'm going is like, okay, you guys went through green light with uh, the superposition. You're going to get that on Steam at some point? No, no. Okay, how about that Vulcan button for superposition? That would be nice. <laughs> That's the thing you said you'd do. <laughs> I think I have everything. Let's see what happens when I have give a bomb, bomb, bomb. Not found. <laughs> okay, what happens if we just go to news, though? They, they unlaunched it, Ven. News is gone too. <laughs> it, it, it was it was too confusing. They had two versions ah, of. Ah, uh, see, look, I, I uh, figured it out. They're they're ah, updating they're, the website right now. Uh huh. Oh. That explains that. Okay. Science. <laughs> Hashtag unlaunch. Uh, I looked that up, and like that, that is a uh, whole cloth doesn't exist in any, not even in like Urban Dictionary. Oh, it will by tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah. Unlaunch, man. Um, Pedro, how does wine work? Well, uh, that is a, uh, a question for the, not really. Uh, it is, as the name would imply, wine is not an emulator. So we know that it's not an emulator. But what does that mean? Well, Andy Hippo uh, wrote a, as he calls it, a uh, very oversimplified description of how wine does the thing that it does. And, okay, it's still a... He says it's oversimplified, but it's still a better explanation than the many I read uh, back at the start of my uh, Linux usage days. Uh, It was, it's genuinely well written. There's some like technical stuff, but it's all used as an example and it's all very, very small and it's all bite sized. You can easily crock bite bite sized, like a computer bite. (laughs) Yes. Uh, you could easily grok what is being uh, explained in the comparisons and how effectively how uh, the how an executable works and how a kernel for an operating system reads uh, that um, particular yeah. bit of uh, code, machine code, and it's very very simple but very easy to understand. So if you're even a little bit curious. Go have a look at that. It's yeah, very well done. <laughs> it it goes into a little bit more about like what what an emulator is versus a like a syscall implementation. So mm-hmm. yeah, now we know why is not an emulator as well. So there's, there's yeah. some good reasoning behind that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's it. I mean, uh, also pro tip because he brings it up in this article. Uh, L uh, D Linux so they're uh, L- yeah L D Linux x eighty six eighty six uh, sixty four so dot two. That's an interview question, by the way. If any of you, I know a bunch of people in chat realm are taking a bunch of job interviews right now. If someone asks you how you can restore executable permissions to chmod after you remove the executable permission to the chmod binary, you run chmod through that library. And yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it's, 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 a, it's a very good article. I highly suggest you give it a read. It will give you a fairly good primer on how wine works and hopefully so, we'll demystify like, the process. Yeah, I've always just, Man, I was looking for the meme. Nobody made it. Wine go burr, and I'm like, I'm good with that explanation. Like, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. It is uh, very succinct and very, very well done. It's uh, yeah, like I said, the best uh, simple explanation that I have read for wine to this day. Very good. 
So, uh, <laughs> what is the primary language for wine? Uh, C, I a? believe. C. What if they C, redid C, it in C++? C++? But why? <laughs> because it would work for throwing you this next story, Pedro. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. No, uh, the, well, the wine may not do it. <laughs> Show but uh, the developers of Jazz 2, the open source engine re-implementation of uh, Jazz Jack Rabbit 2, I streamed it. I streamed the very, very early version where most of the stuff was still not working. But you could play through most of the game with it. And now version 1.0.0 uh, is out. It's been completely rewritten. It was it used to be done in mono. And it had this janky import system for you to import the files that you needed to play the game. That's all gone. Now you just, if you have the CD, pull the files from the CD, put them into the folder, done. Or if you have uh, uh, the GOG version, you can just extract, extract the installer and dump the files into the appropriate folder. It's there's some known issues there, but uh, I don't the know. One I'm just like looking of... at this turtle, and I'm like, I can hear the hard drive like thrashing for the <laughs> animation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, it absolutely works. I've already played through the first episode on it. Um, the upscalers look terrible. Uh, they make everything look too soft. And thankfully, the like basic option is just do the linear scaling, so you get pixely jazz, and that's the one I remember. That's I'm totally fine with it. Um, the controllers. Browser version. Uh, hmm? browser there's a browser version. version. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's uh, a browser version. version. On. That, that's yep. always cool. Uh, Especially for a lot of these older games that like, oh, I gotta go through the trouble of like pulling the source and compiling them. It's like, no, you don't need to. It runs in a browser. It's perfectly fine. And Jazz Jackrabbit is another one of these games right now. Which is pretty mm -hmm. neat. And full controller support now. So if you have any controller, you run it. It's it's really well done. They do want to point out that um, <laughs> your save states uh, cannot be transferred from previous versions. So yes. uh, the ones save, that were built in mono are, are not Compatible. Uh, compatible. Um, save state. Okay. So if, if, if you're being a dirty cheater. Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah, because the game wouldn't allow uh, saving in the middle of levels. How this big were one, the levels? I've never played it. They're not very big, but uh, yeah, it was... Uh, oh, I'd, I, I, now that I'm thinking about it, it wasn't even levels. It was at the start of each chapter. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's when you could save. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jordan, I mean, if I'm doing a segmented speed run. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on, 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 and then stitching it too. together and hoping no one notices. Yeah, no, that, that, that's how I get, make myself like valuable on the internet. That's how people will mm -hmm. like me, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, I guess, Jackrabbit? Yeah, from speed, being a pro Jazz Jackrabbit speedrunner. Segmented otherwise, speed I, runner. Uh, no, 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 I'm going to do segmented speedruns, and then I'm going to stitch them together and pretend that they're it's a full speedrun. Can you live stream the uh, recording? Yeah, and absolutely. Hold the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put the VLC behind me, and I'll be like, yeah, I'm playing the game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, that that would be tight, man. Like, just, <laughs> uh, just maximize the window yeah. on the stream and click play and hold your controller. Where it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, just yeah. screen screen, crum crum key myself over it. Absolutely, 100%. 100%. <laughs> it seems legit. All right, well, that does it for the news segment. Coming up next, Blossom, come to town? Come to save the Princess Zelda? We're back. Welcome to the Chairquisition, where we take a Linux game, run it on a bunch of different Linuxes with a bunch of different hardware, and then rate it on the chairs of destiny, fallen from the sky, Did set to reap to forge from the mithril at the heart of middle earth by a balrog who we don't have the budget to show here anymore because we ran out of money even though the oh lord he's coming dollars. <laughs> oh yeah he's coming um anyway anyways um we're taking a look at blossom tales 2 the minotaur prince done by castle pixel llc developed on fna uh you can pick it up for about 15 bucks uh, us what is it? The Minotaur King has returned, dot, 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 and it's all your fault. Lily's back for a new quote-unquote classic action-adventure game set hundreds of years after The Sleeping King. We got to thank Castle Pixel for sending us some keys, and I guess I get to go first today. So on Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, launched out of the box, 
graphics they're they're acceptable as you can see it's very close to zelda but you know it's like zelda in the simpsons world where everyone has yellow skin because jaundice has just gone wild uh dualshock 4 controller works out of the box but you got to deal with xbox prompts the controls themselves are pretty responsive but it's an fna game so if there's one thing that fna has down it is the fucking controls you got you really got to go out of your way to fuck that up um the soundtrack i don't know it gave me big like legally distinct from zelda vibes it's like listening to the version of hot stuff that we play on the stream it's just different enough that it's not going to trip up a copyright strike but you know fun wise it's zelda for kids uh grandpa's got a story for you pesky brats and because you won't go to fuck to sleep and honestly fuck that little brother he's a little piece of shit who deserves to get kidnapped uh, I would ra uh, rather that the Minotaur King ate him rather than made him the prince. It's, but anyways, gameplay-wise, it's a solid little Zelda-like. Um, the second dungeon is straight up the Water Temple from A Link to the Past, which is okay. Uh, I would say the bosses are a little more forgiving because you can kind of just wail on them. Uh, you get health potions pretty early, so if you just chug them and smack, stand next to the guy and smack them, you really don't need to apply any strategy. Not necessarily a bad thing, given that this is kind of aimed at kids um and you know if you're going to rip off a successful thing at least try to do it as well as the original and this game i can definitely say did that very well it feels like a zelda game with the serial numbers filed off um it's certainly a lot more linear but again given that it is aimed at young children i don't really see that being too much of a problem i don't really have a lot of complaints or i don't have a lot of bad things to say about this game but i kind of don't have any like real good standout things to say about this game either because if you've played zelda then you know what it's about and this doesn't really do much to differentiate itself beyond the the cutesy aesthetic and like grandpa's telling you a story time framing device uh but beyond that like honestly i think it's pretty well done i'm gonna give it three chairs Yeah, over here on the um, Ryzen 7 3700X with the RX 6700 XT, uh, it launched out of the box uh, on the Steam Deck. It also launched out of the box, but then again, it is Steam Deck verified. If it didn't, uh, that would be uh, a bit more worrisome. Uh, it seems to be using an older version of FNA since VSync on the desktop doesn't go all the way to 144. It stays at 60, so all right, okay. The controllers do work, and if you disable Steam input, it does show the uh, PlayStation symbols, as you can see uh, on screen. Uh, and the... Um, when I was playing, uh, Nori commented, it's like, that's a very bouncy girl. And I immediately felt icky for the obvious lewd jokes that popped into my head. But um, yes, even at a cursory glance, everything is very perceptible in its, you know, hipster pixeliness. And the audio is very much along what the uh, SNES 8-bit uh, audio processor, uh, the levels of bleeps and bloops that it could do, very much along those lines. Uh, as for the fun, do you like A Link to the Past's uh, graphic style but wished that you could have played something more along the lines of the original Legend of Zelda, but with those graphics? There you go. That That's exactly what this is. Uh, Grandpa tells the story of the Minotaur King's return, and the grandkids are the main characters. The granddaughter becomes the... Uh, takes on the role of the aforementioned bouncy protagonist, swinging her sword and fishing for piranhas. That's the, uh, the bit where she gets the uh, fishing rod right there. And while the grandson becomes the plot device slash antagonist, the titular Minotaur Prince, if you would. Uh, and yes, it is very much like Zelda with more pop culture references thrown in. And some of them wouldn't even go amiss at around the time that A Link to the Past came out. Like the horse that's stuck in the mud from a certain movie of the 80s or the 70s. I don't remember. One of them. Uh, and... Yeah, others that probably would go very much amiss because they're much more recent. Uh, honestly, it's a perfectly serviceable game, which w will probably be uh, a very good game to introduce a very young child to video games. It is genuinely um, a very good thing. So three chairs for me. <laughs> three chairs for Pedro. How about me? What do I got to do? I got to do the same thing. Over here on Debian testing, running a 1920X with a 3060, uh, a couple of things graphically. What do you get? You get full screen, you get windowed, you get volume and sound adjustments. Oh, no. No rebindable controls in 2022. Hmm. That's kind of weird. I was like, I, I didn't notice. Uh, I was like, uh, but then again, they were logically laid out. I just picked up the uh, 
Xbox uh, X, S, whatever it was, and just started playing. Everything worked. Uh, sharp and crisp pixel graphics, something original games avoided like the plague, but hey, hipster pixel, done mediocre, respectable soundtrack. It works. It gets the job done. It makes sounds. You know, you can boop along with it. Now, we got to talk about the fun for Blossom Tales 2. Imagine if Zelda was a girl. Then you'd have this game. You know? <laughs> I, I really think that that will get Someone's you in the right going mindset. To say something. <laughs> um, it's a test of will, isn't it? Um, <laughs> then shave off a few, a few million yen from that game on the budget. Then you're going to get Blossom Tales uh, too. You know, it's not to be confused with Blossom Tales negative 13. Common mistake. Forgivable. This is, um, as I think Jordan and Pedro both said, it's yet another... I played Link to the Past growing up clone. And, you know, top-down hipster pixel adventure action-ish. You've played this game before, and you're going to play it again. Because, you know, hey, it's a good formula. It's a good format for an action-adventure top-down type game. The twist on this, yeah, that grandpa, grandpa, he's telling you the story. And it causes the game to switch up a little bit from time to time. It's kind of interesting. It does a good job explaining the game mechanics, you know, just like right at the beginning. It was like, kudos for that. You didn't spend a lot, of, and I didn't have to like decipher anything. It's, like, it's how you drive. Drive that'd be interesting. It's how you drag things around. This is how you swing the sword, use the shield. Like well done, well done, well done. Movement is on the slow side of slow. Like I, I cracked open a copy of um, Zelda on the SNES in a browser just to double check the movement speed. I'm like, Ugh, I would like a run button. Maybe you get that later on in the game. But I did give it about uh, 60 minutes to catch me. And instead of doing that, it introduced me to crafting. <laughs> oh, no. Not really my thing. Then I was killed to death by some frogs. That turned into, like, mongoose beavers or something. Then back to frogs, and I died. If fanfic Zelda games are your jam, this might be yours. Uh, it has plenty to keep you occupied. If you're looking for a lot of shit to do, it's got you covered on that in the exploration point. So, you know, I mean, it's functional. It's good to have a native Linux version. And it's available on your Steam Deck. I'll say solid to gentlemen. Um, what do we think overall? Does this feel like yet another Zelda game? Does this thing do anything original, inspiring? Did anything catch you? Like, hey, not uh, not the, really. The, that bit right there with the horse. If you try to use the fishing rod to pull it out of the mud, it's like you could have poked its eye out. Animal cruelty. Animal <laughs> cruelty. Yes, it it has a couple of teeny tiny little moments here and there. I enjoy. It. All right. Yeah, like it, it, it's it's just kind of I don't I don't want to say bland or generic, but it, I mean it, it kind of is, and it's not that in and of itself not a not a bad thing, right? Like it's it it doesn't feel bad playing the game. Like I I had to like consciously stop and put it down because I was enjoying the gameplay well enough. So it, it's it's well done. Um, wh whether yes. whether or not it's gonna like appeal to you is kind of like uh, again up to you, but def definitely hues towards a younger audience. Something I do want to ask though, I mean, how does this formula work in 2022? Because you know, I did go back and revisit that. We, you know, back in like '93, '92, in there, you typically would only have like one or two games to play. And if I had something like this, of course, I'd put all the time into it and all the hours and figure everything out. In 2022, it does it do enough in like to a modern gamer to hold your attention? That's what I'm trying I, to ask. I th I think like yeah I I think yes and I think um I think the fact that like it gives you a map and it tells you where to go is something that like mm -hmm. Zelda doesn't usually do, which definitely helps like keep the focus. Um, th this this isn't and, designed and if, like this would be your only game that you would and have I mean for in the game's defense it does uh, encourage exploration because it gives you the yeah. map and it gives you the general block to go. Yeah, it, it. that's a very good reminder. It's like, okay, you have to go to this block here. So you're never really lost as to where you need to go. If you want to just go off and explore the rest of the map, have at, go nuts. Yeah, no, and I discover like some of the invisible <laughs> bullshit wolves. Uh, yes, well, there's I, a couple of those. And, yes. and, but but it, like, a, like a classic Zelda game, you can explore and then you'll hit an area where it's like, oh, I need an item to traverse this. Like you can't mm -hmm. swim until you get the floaties from the, uh, from the water dungeon. Uh, so yeah, there's... Like again, like I, it's a Zelda ripoff, but it's a it's a well done Zelda ripoff, and that should be applauded. Give me a run button. That's, that's the <laughs> no, you got to roll. Boots. Roll, roll, roll. No, uh, <laughs> I've watched too many people play that that link sound of like yeah, yeah, and like that. No, we're not. We're not. Yeah, nah. yeah. All right, all right, all, all right. right. Well, coming up next, ah! it's time for hate mail. That's that's the sound of hate mail. Hey, 
Shut up. Listen. Hey, listen. This is pain. This is pain. It's the end. And this is the time that you get to uh, basically call us out on our bullshit, effectively. Uh, If we said something during the show, and we probably did, hell, I probably did, uh, multiple times. So now is the time uh, when we would address uh, those uh, qualms that you may have with what we said. And the best way to do this is to uh, write a letter. (laughs) (laughs) Self-addressed. Self-addressed envelope. (laughs) You need a wax to, seal on the back of it, or we're just not going to read it. Linux Gamecast at gofuckyourself.com. Uh, it's <laughs> no uh, Linux Gamecast.com. Uh, it, there's a contact button on the nav bar at the top. You click on that, and there's a little form at the bottom. That's the best way, guaranteed way, that we will actually uh, see your thing, unless you start including URLs. But there's a well, there's a bunch of caveats at the top. It's a secret. Uh, Yes, <laughs> that uh, very much specify that. It's like, if you're going to include URLs, there's one of those that's specifically targeted at you. And some people just <laughs> do not read, man, because our spam golem has, I get a full report I can access, and it will tell me if it's a human or an automated bot. And I've seen some non-bots sit for a solid five minutes trying to push that through. I'm like, read, man. <laughs> Reading is hard. <laughs> Bring back Speaking the blink tag. Speak, mm-hmm. speak, speaking of reading, okay. uh, we, we, we got, we got uh, Andrew, Andrew Schott. He sent us some hate mail talking about World War One. We threw chairs at Asanzo last week, and Pedro made a boo-boo. He says, or, so or we're, did he? Not, or did he? Quote, or did we'll, we'll, find, we'll find out. <laughs> uh, so Andrew says, actually, sorry, I need to push up my imaginary glasses. <laughs> well, Mo- most World War One guns were quite powerful, more so than the battlefield rifles of today. The M16 and a few other currently used rifles are designed not to overpenetrate, pooping all kinetic energy on hit and or to wound, causing few others to have our tend to the have to our tend to the injured each. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally, the whole thing, Pedro. How yeah, dare you? Yes. Um, the whole um, thing. Okay. So, uh, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> what you're pointing out there is how the bullets uh, were more powerful, not how the rifles themselves were. Well, but actually, that, you, Pedro, I think you'd be addressing the muzzle velocity as somebody who has several black. <laughs> yes, I was going uh, to address that next because I, I didn't see day, in the show notes. How did I know? Yeah, most of uh, today's rifling inside the barrels of rifles and handguns and everything else is uh-huh. far more advanced than it was back in 1920, whatever. Uh, it is... What do we do these days? We draw like penises on the inside? Or... <laughs> I, just, I just go the, to Walmart the, the and I tell them to is actually the best made to increase muzzle velocity and to get the projectile further and quicker. But... The point that he's making there is is a valid point because those were solid projectiles back in the day. They were the the bullets were effectively solid, so they went through things. Nowadays, you have the hollow points and even the full metal jacket. There's some full metal jacket bullets that have very soft cores, which are designed to do exactly as you say, and then you also have the slugs, the ones with the very solid cores that are still very much designed to go through everything. Well, what if I'm using rifles? Well, come well, I'm curious, man. Like, <laughs> what if my I'm using depleted uranium? <laughs> I, I, look, I, I just look forward to us getting eviscerated. Some gun podcast is going to get a hold of this episode and be like, what do these computer nerds know about guns? Look at these idiots. But yes, no, his point stands in the way that, yes, projectiles back in the day were a lot more damaging because they were solid. (laughs) They were slugs, effectively. Also, also, you know, also (laughs) medical technology, a lot shittier in World War One. So if you got shot Uh, by a bullet. Probably, yeah, in terms of like the powder content, they probably had a lot more than Here's an easy stretch for the hate mail segment. <laughs> when they first, I think it was World War One when they introduced helmets as mandatory battle kit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and casualties went up. Was was it, was it because people were more reckless because they thought they were protected? No, yeah, it was. A. Uh, it turns out like people ended up. Well, okay, not casualties, but um, what do you call it? like injuries? Injuries, sure. Injuries. Turns out what happened was instead of people just dying, they were surviving getting hit ah, okay. so 
Yeah, it was counterintuitive, like with the data. So like, right, what? Yeah, Why yeah, are yeah. more people re- we're getting more injuries with the helmets? That doesn't yeah, make any you, sense. You, you, you need that other figure to compare yeah. it to, and then you, oh, that's where those numbers. <laughs> right, you're like, oh, right. See, but the fatalities are going down. And they're like, nope, nope, nope. Get rid of the um, helmets. No, fortunately, they stuck around with them. And thank you for sticking around with us. But we gotta go. I know we gotta break it off. But don't worry, we'll be back next week. Until then, you can always. Get a dose of me. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but hey, baby, I'm there. Vin Stone on Twitter. Just at Vin over at mass.lenixemcast.com. I'm always in our uh, Discord if you want to hop in that. And you can always at reply me on Twitch or an IRC and I'll see it. And it will be a thing. Bang, bang. I'm your bulleteer, babe. Shut me find down. Me, yeah. Uh, <laughs> find me on uh, Twitter at The Burning Pool or uh, twitch.tv slash Burning Pool. And uh, you can discuss the intricacies of uh, <laughs> barrel rifling and uh, what effects it has on projectiles at Unaccounted For on Twitter. I'm sure that won't get either of us on a list anywhere. <laughs> How many lists do you think we're on? Over on. <laughs> okay, uh, like serious, serious lists? Probably two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, two. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to think of Here's some credits. We're unlaunching the next GameCast. We're coming back <laughs> next week. That's a completely different podcast, you guys. Oh, man. Don't give me a week to plan on that, man. Fuck off. Nah, so I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta plant that in your brain just so that we can. We gotta thank our advisors, our, our unadvisors, Omega Star Theorem, and our... Uh, Unexecutive. <laughs> Unexecutive Produce. producers, unproducers, Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer 7, Kaku, George Pebble, Tomaj, Uno. Chicago Unoid. does, in fact, kick ass. Just ask Subtraction yeah. and Super Death Dude. And, and the Sea Monsters. The Sea Monsters. The un- 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 Rider X back in a tragedy. Vertanuda, Aww. Justin Frostclaw, Nubbin, David Darkwing, System T, and Dancing Joe. <laughs> He's a we, dancing Joe. We got the Death Note, Snow Cape, Basil, Chad, Lizzie Bacon, Oil of Hope, Stein, Stein, and Rue, Stein, Dodger, Stein, Game Otron, right. and Fox. We got, we got, we got <laughs> Sherlings as well. Giovanni, John, uh, Gronk and Alonka, Paolo P, Craig, Ella, North Ranger. Yeah. North Ranger, yeah. <laughs> Evandro, Rosmo, Daniel, Thomas T, Oil of Hope, Egal, Strider, Zeno, Replay Day. Gaming PT, there he is. <laughs> or as I call him, Pro Tools. Yeah. <laughs> Fine upstanding animals. Carl, Mike, or Theron, Lennox, Drew, Old Is, Nicholas, John, E, Chef, Gamatron, and Unoid. Unoids. Well, ladies and Great gentlemen, big just remember <laughs> wear your helmets. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? <laughs> helmets? Yeah, helmets. Don't be a fool. Protect your tool. My tool is not a You can dodge a ball. <laughs> I have, I have a screw. I have a screwdriver in my brain. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. The rifling's better in my helmet. Fair enough. Bad <laughs> fire, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>